right. So for those of you just joining us uh, on video, which actually some people are watching, which is did my heart good to find out, uh, we're talking about greed. And the trouble with greed is figuring out how much is enough. Um, and we all have more than enough. Uh, if you have more than one bathroom, you have more than enough. Here's something to get your head around. If you have more than one room in your house, you have more than enough, right? If you have a car, you have something that most people in the world don't have. You have more than enough. If you have a room in your house where you put your car, you have more than enough, okay? So, so we all have more than enough. So if it's a sin to have more than enough, then we're all sinning. But it's kind of blurry, isn't it? Maybe it is okay to have more than enough. But then how much more than enough? Like the TV preachers would say, some TV preachers would say, God wants to, have, to give you an abundance, wants to give you way more than enough, wants to make you rich. I have not found that personally. But, you know, that's up to you. But somewhere in the middle of, you know, a one-room hut in Africa and Bill Gates, somewhere in the middle there is the right amount for us to have, right? Except that I'm not sure it really is about how much we have or the heart behind it. And I really think that's what greed is about. It's something in our hearts. It's not about how much or how little, but it's a heart issue. I'll give you an example. A rich young ruler in the scriptures came to Jesus and said, hey, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said this and that. And then eventually he said, why don't you go ahead and just go sell everything you have, give the money to the poor and come follow me. You'll be the 13th disciple. And then we would have 13 disciples, right? Uh, and the guy didn't do it. He went away sad, like presumably because he was attached to all the stuff he had. But Jesus didn't say that to everyone. He really only said it to that guy. Even the fishermen that followed him, it seems anyway that they kept their boats and stuff because they kept going back, uh, you know, at different stages where they would go out on their boat. And that's a, that was a fairly wealthy thing. Um, in the early church, there were all kinds of different socioeconomic classes. Uh, there were slaves, as we talked about last week. And there were also people who were fairly wealthy. Lydia was a dealer in purple cloth, a merchant in uh, Philippi who became a Christian. And there's nothing recorded about how she was required to then sell everything she had. In fact, it seemed like she kept what she had. She kept her house, at least, because they used her house as a meeting place for the church there. And so the Christian faith from the beginning has kind of included people from different socioeconomic classes. And there's a lot of room to sort of question, well, what does this mean? What does it actually look like in my life? And, and so I really think that when it comes to greed, it's not the amount, but it's about the heart that's behind it. I want to look at a passage that I think says a lot about this, but I want to give you the context first. If you have a Bible, it's in Luke 12. You can be turning there. Uh, we'll put it on the screen and follow along with it in a minute. But first, let me give you what's happened. Jesus, by this point, has gained some popularity. There is a large crowd numbering many thousands. That's what the scriptures say. Many thousands of people. So if you can imagine that, thousands of people gathered to hear this guy who's shouting at the top of his lungs to try to teach people, okay? And he's teaching them about all kinds of amazing things, about loyalty to God, loyalty to him, not being embarrassed by him. It's the passage where he says, God cares about the sparrows, not a sparrow falls to the ground, and you're worth way more than that to God. In fact, he's numbered the hairs on your head. So Jesus has just finished saying some really profoundly spiritual, comforting things. And there's sort of a pause in the conversation. I don't know if Jesus was going to do q and um, I'm not sure what. I don't know if you've ever been to a session where there's Q&A, they open up the mic, and someone gets up and says something, and you just go, what? Were you even here? It's not on topic at all. What are you talking about? And that's what happens to Jesus in Luke 12. I told you to be looking up, but I wasn't. So now I have to look it up. So a guy sort of interrupts this teaching, says this. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. OK, remember, thousands of people. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus doesn't seem all that thrilled with the request. He says, man, back to the 70s, man, 
Who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? This is not my role. Why, why are you looking to me for this? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. So one element of greed is that it puts all your focus on money. So you can be there in the crowd listening to the greatest spiritual teacher that has ever walked the face of this earth, listening to God in the flesh, and all you can think of is, I wish my bro wouldn't have got all the dough. <laughs> and, and it takes over your thought patterns. It takes over what you're thinking about. <laughs> Liz just got it? So... Um, I just want to take this opportunity that if you ever want to do a fundraiser, Liz has a great idea for a fundraiser. Just talk to her about that later. Uh, yeah, just ask her about it or ask me about it. I'd love to tell this story, but, um, it involves Justin Trudeau and his new initiatives. Anyway, the point is Jesus says to this guy and to everyone around, he says, watch out. Okay, this is an interesting word, right? Like, when do we yell the words, watch out, look out? Someone is about to whip a basketball at your face, or, you know, you're about to get run over by a car, or a moose comes charging across the street, a little more contextual. Uh, watch out! We say that when there's danger, when there's, there's, you know, some sort of a trap, or there's, you know, something impendingly dangerous about to happen. We say, watch out! And so Jesus is saying, hey, whoa, watch out here. There's danger. There's something very, very dangerous happening right here. And then he says, be on your guard, which is another term that kind of says there's danger. Be, be on the defense. Watch out. Be careful. It's almost like there's an attack coming, which is exactly what this series is about, isn't it? That there are things that wage war against our souls. One of those things is greed. And so Jesus says, be careful, watch out, it's a trap. And he says, beware of greed in all its forms. Beware of all, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Greed is something that comes in different shapes and sizes. It's going to attack on many different levels. I'm sure if you think of a greedy person, you don't think of you, usually. You have a different sort of greed in mind, usually, than the, own, than the greed that you you know, struggle with in your life. Let me give you an idea of how greed sort of comes out, okay? For some people, it's all about the numbers. Now, we have, like, the idea of Scrooge sitting there in his uh, home or whatever, counting his stacks of gold coins, right? That's, that's greed, and none of us are like that, right? Because we don't have gold coins anymore. Now we have statements. So maybe a little bit more attention than what we should pay to our statements on our savings account or our uh, retirement or our investments. Maybe, maybe paying a little bit too close of attention to that might have something to do with greed. You say, well, that's just smart to watch. Well, maybe it's smart. Maybe there's something more to it. Or how about this? Sometimes greed comes out in physical things, the stuff that we can get with money, like cars and houses and furniture and gadgets and toys and clothes and shoes and books. Books, book greed is one of the most powerful forms of greed, for me at least. It's hard to say no to a good book. What about experiential greed? This comes out like in vacations and restaurants and spa days and weekend getaways and concerts. Like I'm not like a greedy person who spends money on stuff. I'm like a greedy person who spends money on experiences. Okay. Or greed can come out in... Well, greed can come out in expensive things. That's often what we think of, like the rich, you know, shopping at those fancy stores. I don't even know the names of them, so I couldn't put them in here. Um, you know, and they're spending crazy amounts of money, like $200 for a pair of jeans and stuff. And they go, well, we just go, that's, that's just judging. Or that's judging. Yes, it is. That's just silly. But the truth is that greed can be just as much about inexpensive things, about the bargains that are too good to pass up even if we don't need them. Don't ask me about the chairs that I bought this week. So, my chairs, that is. So, 
You can go into ha- the dollar store, you can go into the Habitat Restore, and the dollar amounts are different, but the greed is still there, right? The, the unhealthy, excessive desire for the stuff that money can buy us. Even who doesn't have, someone who doesn't have any money at all can struggle with greed. That's gonna, not going to come out in purchases, extravagance, but it'll come out in their thought life, in a constant fixation on if only I had money, it would solve all my problems. So greed isn't just necessarily what we look at. It comes out in a lot of different ways. It's an excessive love of money. And then Jesus says something that I think is very profound. He says, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. The life that you're looking for is not found in stuff or the stuff money can buy. I'm in school right now doing lots of writing, and I know the value of a good, concise, clear thesis statement. I would suggest this would be a great thesis statement for what Jesus is about to talk about. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Maybe something to commit to memory, to come back at just the wrong time. (laughs) I suspect that this is what the guy who interrupted Jesus' sermon was struggling with. If only I could get my brother to divide up the inheritance with me, my life would be better. And I think, honestly, that's at the heart of any time that we struggle with greed, whether it's money in the bank or whether it's stuff that money can buy. I think we're looking for life, life, a better life, a richer life, a fuller life, a more satisfying life, a better experience, maybe a more peaceful life with more security. When we're pulled along by money,